Port Leeds tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. No matter how you take your hooch, we've got something ice cold and on tap. Now, serving it to you straight and unfiltered, here are Craig, Scott, and Dan. Yes, sirree. Yes. What's happening, everybody? Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. We are the Unfiltered Gentlemen. I am Greg, or there, that's Scott. Trick or treat. And that's Dan. What up? <laughs> Welcome in, everybody. Uh, we have quite the action-packed mm. show for y'alls. I think that's what they say in the uh, middle states Yes, there. they do. Y'alls. Y'alls. Uh, we have a listener email. We have Toby. You guys remember Toby who had Toby Fest last year where he has like the annual tailgate like drunk fest? From last, anyways, he sent in. <laughs> an, you'll be reminded. He sent in another email. He uh, had his annual Toby Fest oh. where they got really drunk. We'll, we'll read his email about that. Okay. Uh, we have got our first edition of the uh, drunk stories from Integrants oh, Oktoberfest, cool. where we were recording people's drunk stories. We got uh, some sports news to get to. I promise we will not whine too long about the Dodgers. <laughs> uh, we also. Uh, <laughs> have a couple of good beers to talk about some booze news and so much more uh, but first shout out to <laughs> simi valley california what? oh wow just around the corner mm. there bang yeah i was surprised to see that uh, topping off our lists of top listeners ship last week but thank you guys in slimy valley for yes, having indeed. a listen uh and our bird board of the week is haunting it is halloween after all oh, okay right. tomorrow ish or depending on when you listen to this uh, so our burp word of the week is haunting. When you're on the social medias, don't forget to hashtag show us your beers or we got some great can art. We love cans. Hashtag cans for cans. <laughs> and uh, rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and all of those good things and, and tag us in your uh, pictures and, and everything else like that because uh, we like beer porn. Yes. Oh, yeah. Speaking of beer, I'm uh, parched. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for beer of the week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer Yes, indeed we do. This one, uh, for those of you who also listen to Beer Harmony, and this is not like a cheap plug for that show, <laughs> we reviewed a couple weeks back, and I really try not to have the same beers back and forth on both both shows, but I enjoyed this one so much, and I thought you guys might as well. I thought we just had to have it on the show. Uh, this is the one we mentioned, Bear Republic's Tiki Totem IPA. Ah. Yeah, 6%, 50 IBUs, has a 3.45 on Untapped. If you recall, when we recorded the Beer Harmony episode, it only had 15 reviews on, on Untapped. Now it has 377. Wow. Still no beer advocate ratings. Hmm. Uh, from the brewery, they say an extremely crushable new school American IPA bursting with ripe and lush tropical fruit flavors. A dry malt finish and pleasant bitterness provide a good foundation for the fruit explosion for, of cashmere, jester, and Huel melon hops. Look mm. at all the hops we've got. <laughs> Lots of hops. Yeah. What do you fellas think of this one? I really, really enjoy it. You know, I got to say, on the nose, for whatever reason, like, it kind of, like, I was like, what is this? Like, it's very, like, <laughs> like kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say fruity, and it's a terrible description of it. But uh, I don't know. It was almost, like, kind of sour or something mm. on, on, my, on the nose there. Like, I was like, is this going to be sour? And I was pleasantly surprised to realize yes. that it was not, not sour. Oh, it's very delicious. Yeah, it's very good. Maybe like a, um, not like a sour beer, but like a sour can- candy smell, like a fruit sour candy okay. smell on the nose. Yeah, yeah, you know? something like that. Like a sour patch kid A little bit, a little bit. Uh, lots of tropical flavors. I love the juiciness of it. I really had a problem when we recorded Beer Harmony because uh, I kept doing this. Yeah. Because it like really makes your tongue water and... <laughs> Whatever it does to your tongue is, is it's amazing. It's really I, good. Yeah, I really, I, it was so crushed. I just put it down <laughs> and really, really liked it. I love cashmere hops. They're starting to become more popular. Maybe that's what it is, the cashmere hops. Maybe. They kind of give it that smooth, round feeling and taste. Mm-hmm. Um, Huel Melon is starting to become more popular, but the cashmere just, they're my favorite. I tried to make an all cashmere IPA like a year and a half ago. I don't know if you remember that one, like crashed and burned real hard. Oh. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> uh, but I don't blame it on the hops. Blame it on the alcohol. Uh, so anyways, I like this one a lot, and uh, it's a good way to start Halloween. I'll co-sign that. With a, with a, a treat. treat. Yes. 
Mm. Good stuff. Yeah, this is a treat. Yes. Excuse Not a trick. Like, no, excuse me. I drink some more. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. Uh, lots to get to. Let us know if you guys have had this. It's brand new. Came out like four weeks ago, I think, from uh, Bear Republic. Find it at Trader Joe's. Best beers are always at Trader Joe's. There you go. They got a stack to over there. All right. We got a lot to talk about. Let's uh, Let's jump right in. If the shit will play. Have a grievance to share? It's take a, time for take a, a drink, everybody. <laughs> it's part of the drinking game. <laughs> uh, yes, very important thing to mention. Uh, this coming Saturday, November 3rd, we, the gentlemen, will be at 818 Brewing in the L.A. area. What is that? Canoga Park, California, for a live show with uh, the Boobs League. They will be riding our coattails once again, just like <laughs> at uh, the local in Camarillo. So coming out, uh, the show starts at 2 to be quite honest, I haven't quite decided on the order. I think we might go first. Okay. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, show starts at 2. Come on out to 818 Brewing. More information, uh, facebook.com slash the unfiltered gentleman. We have one of the little event things that the nice. peoples do on Facebook. So please come out and uh, let us know if you have any questions. So. I would say we should go first so there'll be somebody there by the time we, you know, I mean, if we go second, everybody's going to be gone. Uh, or sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Let's <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's prime the crowd for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So. Like, oh, God, this is what we're in. <laughs> this is what we're in for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll be gone by the time we oh, get up there. man. It's a good point. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, I don't know what happens in other states or other counties and cities, but apparently out here in the L.A. area, planes land on air or on uh freeways oh, yeah oh yeah i heard about oh. that <laughs> did you guys get fucked by this too i no. did oh yes two out of three <laughs> <laughs> i rolled up on it real quick and luckily was taking some side streets like i was listening to the radio and uh got around it by going on a side street past the freeway and then as you rolled up to where the accident was then all streets came to a halt and we right. crawled because the idiots the were getting out of their car and taking pictures. Oh, God. So annoying. Yeah. I'd rolled up right when the airplane had got, the flames had gotten put out. Oh, really? So it was pretty fresh. Yeah. Um, probably added, I don't know, 30-ish minutes to my drive home. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. I, I'm guessing you were probably like five minutes in front of me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, um, yeah, I just gotten on the freeway and I, I could see all the emergency vehicles, you know, coming by and passing us up and... You know, I kept thinking they're coming to get me because I was probably drinking. Right, <laughs> probably but they went right by me. So um, as if there's yeah. a question, <laughs> <laughs> probably drinking. What kind of plane so, was it? It was an old like uh, World War Two yeah. plane, like a German plane or something. Really? Yeah, yeah. And the idiot didn't know how to fly it, I guess, because he just buried it right in the middle of the freeway. Yeah, or didn't know what a, r- a runway was. Like, apparently. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. he's the Scott of the skies. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Airplane Uber. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, his passengers got out. You're drunk. <laughs> so yeah, my my typical forty minute drive took two hours. Yeah, damn. Yeah, the lady friend, the the fiance, got caught in that too. She got to it. See, I rolled. I think some two something two thirty. I don't remember. But she got off work at five and came up on it. You know, five thirty or whatever it was. Because she couldn't Still go at five thirty. Oh yeah, it took her over two hours oh, to get home. Wow, it normally takes like thirty-five minutes yeah. to go over two hours, and she couldn't go the other way. For those of you who don't know, the layout—I won't get too detailed because this is very California. <laughs> There's another freeway you could have taken to get to our our place uh, from where her work is, but that one was closed because a pickup truck had turned over and spilled pool chemicals <laughs> all over the freeway. So they were in the process of cleaning oh, that fuck, up. Fuck, man. It was like a Terminator movie yeah. or something. It's like that Saturday Night Live skit these do. The 405 yeah. to the 101. Yeah, it's the Californians. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marina Del Rey. Uh, if you haven't seen yeah. that, look it up. And since this is <laughs> okay. guess, crotch talk, I could just yeah. say, I get, it ended up kind of being justice, but the thing that, you know, you, you have these idiot people that think they're just better than everybody else. Oh, yeah. So we're, you know, we're getting off, the, they close the freeway, we're getting off on the exit, and everybody's just sitting there, and some idiot... This little sports car just, you know, drive, decides he's going to drive up the shoulder and just oh, pass everybody bag. up. And so what he did he get when he got to the the end of the uh, on ramp, he made a right hand turn and apparently he went down I don't know a couple blocks and then made a U turn to come back. So kind of a justice thing was there was you know high patrol was there you know directing traffic right and uh, they wouldn't let him in. Oh good. And and I you know I can't hear what they're saying. I could just read the body language where the cop is saying no I saw you go down there and make a U turn and come back so you're not going anywhere. <laughs> good. And the guy kept arguing with him said no no I came out of this street over Shut here. Shut the fuck so, up. I mean, it was a little bit of justice because the guy got stopped. I think he should have gotten a citation, which he didn't. And then they still let him in, like, maybe 10 cars in front of me, which he was probably, like, to begin with, 20 cars behind me. So oh, he yeah. still made out, but... Douche. Yeah. I hate fucking people like that. Well, he is more important than you. 
Uh, of course. Never yeah, forget he's got that. His little, his little never fancy. Forget. Yeah, never <laughs> forget that. <laughs> little fancy pants sports cars. So right. He should be just, you know. Yeah, squirt right through. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Was it red, too? Uh, green. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, fine. Um, <laughs> lucky you, Dan. Yeah, lucky no you. kidding. I know. That was a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, I had to hear about it like, the next day. People were like talking about it. I'm like, really? That yeah. happened? The best yeah. part was like I got to the office, and some people were watching on the news. I was like, oh, yeah, I just drove through that. <laughs> like, oh, what it look like? I was like, well, <laughs> you see what you're looking at on the news? Like, yeah. I was like, that. <laughs> it looked like a fucking plane on a freeway, you yeah. idiot. Yeah, I just passed the probably the last exit I could have taken and maybe find another route, which probably couldn't by then anyway. Yeah. And I get a phone call from my wife. Hey, you better you know find another way home. There's a plane crash. Yep. Too late. Yeah, I was always, already on the side street, which was a little better than the freeway, but still really slow. And, and my lady friend calls me. She's at work, so she goes, I just heard about this airplane on the freeway. Where are you? I said, in the middle of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and had I not, I had to stop on the way home. Had I not stopped, like I did the timing, I was like, "Oh, I would have been like landed on by that airplane. I would have either oh, really? just missed it or just seen it happen." Can you imagine? Yeah, wow. was, holy crap, dude! Exciting. Shouldn't have stopped. Woo! Yeah, could have gotten landed on. Yeah, that would. Woo! That'd be fun. I haven't been landed on in years. Hey, oh, damn! So, um, speaking of grievances, the booze league. Uh oh. Yeah, that's it. Good night, everybody. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's everybody's grievances. Yeah, yeah, right. No, the I was on Boozecast Draft Forty One. So, if you want a reason to actually listen to the booze league, uh, Boozecast. I was on it. I did listen to that one. Draft Forty One. Me too. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Uh, they just no, they doubled their t- listenership. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. That's pretty They're good. They're all proud of themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I We recorded it night of uh, game one of the World Series. So I had a uh, top five <laughs> beers that Dodger fans need to drink while watching the World Series. Of course, the top four were, you know, good beers to have while watching a game. Number one was Sequoia Sout from Five Threads Brewing because that bitch is 17%. Hmm. And uh, we all knew they weren't going to make it through the World oh. Series. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we talked uh, some beer. We drank some beer and uh, I made it a real show. Yeah, you You're certainly wel- did. You're welcome, fuckers. Uh, what? A- oh, happy uh, belated birthday to the old man over here. No, nope. wow, yeah. thank you. Sunday was his birthday. Yeah, made mm-hmm. it through another year. I know. <laughs> Still beating the odds. Still waiting for him to kick the bucket. I know. <laughs> Surprised as you are. Not this year. <laughs> <laughs> We're surprised. Your wife's disappointed. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Then again, isn't she always? She's got that life insurance on speed dial. <laughs> yeah. They're like, here's your $20, ma'am. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> You're like, ooh, that much. Um, anyways, in, in honor of the birthday boy, boy. <laughs> That's like Shawn Michaels is still the heartbreak kid. Yeah, I know, <laughs> It's like right? dude's in his 50s. <laughs> Cross-eyed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what <do> we- <laughs> <laughs> Let's say it. He's cross-eyed. He he's, he's somehow gone. He's, he's gotten kicked in the face too many times. Poor guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, we went to uh, Flatfish Brewing out in, Cal- in Camarillo, California, for a couple of beverages. We did. Um, they were on the show a couple months back, and uh, Mike, the owner slash brewer, took us for a nice little tour through the yeah. facility, and we got to try some new beers that he's working on that haven't hit the market yet. Uh, one of which was a blonde and. And no disrespect, but just typical blonde, easy to drink, uh, went down real easy. Like, typical blonde. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> went down easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we drank some beer. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, 5%. It was, it was Best good. Best birthday ever. Yeah, finally. And um, <laughs> <laughs> then he, he also let us try his uh, new IPA he's coming out with. Yes. Super tropical oh. and juicy and just kind of reminds you of this Tiki Totem a little bit. Not, not mm-hmm. quite as fruity as the Tiki Totem, but... Uh, Real fucking crushable. So I'm very excited for that. Yeah. So if you guys find yourself in the Camarillo area on, uh, well, I think the tap room officially opens Saturday, November 3rd. So after you're done at our live show at 818 Brewing, head north and go check out Flatfish. Uber on down. That's right. Uh, I'll get you there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find out when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> He's flying planes now. <laughs> if you haven't heard. So. Uh, what else we got? Oh, well, any any grievances? By the way, we we good? Uh, and, super quick. Okay. Yeah, I did want to talk about. Um, you know, I know last week we brought in the, the I brought in the Evil Dead Red Ale, right. for us to drink. Delicious. And it's kind of a, yeah, delicious. You know, and I was thinking about like why don't other beers have like you know red ale like blood red like you know sure. it should be. And I remembered there was a beer by Newcastle, and it was called Werewolf. Uh, blood red ale oh and um i googled it like because i was you know it's like i hadn't had it in about i think they discontinued it like four years ago okay and i think they brought it back this year but i couldn't find it anywhere to bring it on the really? show yeah i don't think i've ever heard of it yeah i know it's it, it was something they had for a couple of years and every year i was like oh yeah i'm so happy they brought it out and then they just stopped one year and i was like what the hell happened and 
I heard they brought it back this year, but I haven't been able to find it. If anybody knows, yeah, let us know. Yeah, like, yeah. send unfil- us some. Yeah, at unfiltered gents no kidding, on Twitter. Or, that's that's just something I miss. Yeah, man. it was good. Or let Dan know at cleanup ga- glass on Twitter. <laughs> Not gas. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that's Scott's handle. <laughs> <laughs> Clean up gas. <laughs> oh god, interesting. Oh, yeah, nice. I I hadn't uh, heard them, but Reds yeah. are not popular enough. Correct. They're delicious. And maybe that's what happened. But I just thought I'd put the feelers out there. Mm-hmm. See if anyone. Can yeah, please find let it. us know. That's uh, that's important work there. Yeah. Uh, all right, old timey word of the week: bag o mystery. <laughs> bag o mystery. Bag o mystery. Apparently, it's what they used to call sausages Whoa. back in the day. What? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it makes sense when you do the math on it. It's like you never knew what you were getting. Holy so shit, I guess dude. you can get a bag of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awful. Sausage, huh? Yeah, sausage. Yeah, interesting. So, uh, well, I guess even back then, they didn't know what it was. Yeah. You know? We still don't. <laughs> no. Yeah. Go to the Dodger game, get that bag of mystery. Ooh, mm. damn. Nothing worse than a Dodger dog. The old bag of mystery... Uh, dog yeah i i feel like it's not fair to do beer baby of the week after that so let's uh let's mix things <laughs> up because <laughs> it just wouldn't be right let's go sports speaking of dodger dogs and now the sports brought to you by cleaning up the glass.com whether it's the baltimore chop or the one-two punch it's time for sports well i think we could all wax on poetically about how mad we are at the dodgers lost blah 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 i'm not going to let us do that because <laughs> There's enough people that don't live in L.A. that listen to the show who <laughs> would be so annoyed and, and, quite frankly, just asleep by the end of that. But I will say uh, it's unfortunate. Boston was the better team and the better managed team. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens next year. But the best thing that came out of that series was uh, after the walk-off. I think that was in Game 3, right, where Muncie had the uh, walk-off homer? Yeah. Yes, game three. Well, afterwards, they were interviewing him as they would interview any other star of the game. And uh, Muncie revealed to us their nickname for the pitcher, Rich Hill. So good. You know, we got Richie going tomorrow. We got Dick Mountain. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's been great the last couple of starts. And I got a feeling he's going to be unbelievable tomorrow. Apparently, Rich Hill's nickname is Dick Mountain. That's a great <laughs> nickname. That is fantastic. <laughs> Dick Mountain. Yeah. good. I mean, you do the math, Rich, Dick, Hill, yeah. Mountain. Yeah. Wow. It makes sense. It's a very good nickname. Oh, God. When he's, I said, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> Hold on a second. And like rewind, I was like, nope, sure enough, he just said <laughs> Dick Mountain. <laughs> That's hilarious. I have to imagine it's one of those things that Dick Mountain probably never wanted to become public, mm-hmm. like said on television, especially for his wife's sake. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, maybe so. His, maybe his wife did. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. It's like, you got to see it. it's a mountain of a yeah. dick. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she nicknamed him. Yeah, no Could kidding. be. Could be. But, yeah. Maybe he's like Ric Flair. Ric Flair's nickname was Space Mountain. Oh, yeah. Because right. all the ladies wanted to ride. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So, uh, good job, Dig Mountain. Too bad they pulled you too early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Yankees are said to be only lukewarm now on signing Manny Machado. I think everyone is now. Uh, yeah, I no guess they, kidding. <laughs> they are very turned off by his postseason antics. Yeah. And his dirty play and lack of hustle. Is, and, yeah, yeah. Right. I know a lot of Dodger fans that are. Uh, yeah. Especially in this room. <laughs> yeah, he is definitely not worth whatever money he's going to be looking for. <laughs> nope. Uh, then again, neither is Kershaw. Or Grandal. Yeah. Oh, God. Learn how to catch a ball. No, like, uh, anyway. Yeah, it's in your title. Yes. Catcher. <laughs> Catcher. Uh, Bryce Harper, who... Uh, potentially a free agent has a i think a player option apparently has already come up with a deal uh, according to sources it's already quote in place now that can only happen if it's with his own team otherwise it's illegal so either the the nationals have already uh re-signed him or somebody's gonna get fined for working this out but uh, we'll see what happens with bryce harper that'd be a nice pickup for the doyers yeah yeah i'd take bryce harper yeah I'd get rid of about half our roster from no that. kidding so. Yeah, rumor has it there was a deal in going on in him for Puig, but then that kind of fell through. I'll take it. In fact, as, um, I do know this for a fact, that back when the Nationals put uh, Harper on waivers, and just a, kind of a move to see what they could get for him, uh, The only there's only, they said there's only one team that that um, put uh, interest for him, it, yeah. yeah, and that team ended up being the Dodgers, and the player that they were offering was Puig. Okay. But yeah, but the Nationals were like, nah, we just wanted to see what's... You know, just kidding. Just <laughs> kidding. Nobody really wants Puig. I, no, right? Yeah, no, there's, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's, yeah, right. we're on the street. 
Uh, on to football. Josh, See, I was talking about Nationals, not Dodgers. Right, so yeah, that makes it that's okay. okay yeah. yeah. On to football talk. Josh Gordon already getting in trouble with his <laughs> Patriots team. Apparently this time for tardiness. Oh, really? Yeah, so we'll see what uh, punishments are handed down that way. That is, that is not a team to fuck around with. Yeah, it's not enough that he stops smoking. He's like, oh, you guys want me to show up on time? Too? <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> one step at a time, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I guess they just figured one would kind of sort out the other. Yeah. If he wasn't stoned all the time, maybe he'd show up on time. Uh, the Brian, the Brian's, wow. The Browns, in a classy move, fire their head coach after the game on Sunday. Oh, yeah. Because, what, a, a better coach would get more out of their shit players? <laughs> I mean, the guy, what was it? He's got, like, the worst percentage in, like, head coaching history or something like that. Like, maybe second worst. I mean, isn't his, like, overall percentage, like... Well, I think he's won a game and tied a game, right? Yeah. He's there for a season and a half. I think they... Haven't they won two this year? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they win two? They won two and tied one and lost the rest. It's like 333 and one or something like that (laughs) with the Browns, like, which is terrible. I mean, the guy's got my respect that he stuck around that long. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and they had to fire him to get him him to leave. Yeah, poor guy had to move to Cleveland. Yeah, man. (laughs) Yikes. So uh, good luck with your awesome team Mm -hmm. with the better coach. Uh, And the bunk, the bunk, wow. I'm going to need another beer. The (laughs) Bucks have benched Winston for Fitzpatrick. About time. In the middle of the game. That's a. that's embarrassing. Yeah. It's about time. And Fitzpatrick yeah. is starting next week. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know why they're fighting it, too. I, I feel like Fitzpatrick is, like, going to be, like, you know what I mean? How many teams did, like, after Warner played for the Rams, like, and he bounced around and he found yeah. the Cardinals, and they were like, this is our guy, you know? Right. And then, like, Carson Palmer bounced around after he played with the Bengals, and he landed on the Cardinals, too, oddly enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, they're like, oh, Wait this is our guy now, you know? So, I don't know. I kind of feel like they're fighting it. Like, I understand he's a journeyman, but maybe this is your guy right here, you know? Yeah. I mean, Kirk Cousins bounced around a little bit. That's right. Star quarterback of the, the Vikings That's now, right. And so. Yeah. And, I, and for sure it isn't Jameis. I mean, we right. know that. We don't need another year to see this guy sucks. Yeah. He's only good at stealing crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> Deep pull. Uh, and then a little bit of basketball news. The Cavs. After their 0-6 start, fired Coach Tyron Lue. Wow. And apparently the players are pissed. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's, they wanted to keep losing? I guess. <laughs> I think they wanted to hire LeBron, but he's, he's already under contract <laughs> yeah. with the Lakers. He already so. quit. Yeah. Know. Coach LeBron's it's gone. It's his first year as head coach. Give him a break. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what do you <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah, LeBron was oh, yeah. coach. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Uh, yeah. I don't, what else? Are they gonna, They don't have a team anymore. They, no. LeBron was the team, and now the team and coach have gone. What are you mm-hmm. I, it's just like the Cows. How are you going to get any better? I mean, the, the Browns. How are you going to yeah. get any better by firing the coach? <laughs> Cleveland sucks. Yeah. All around. <laughs> Poor uh, Cleveland, man. I know, right? Look what they're going through. They, the, the halfway decent thing was the Indians, and I mean, they were in the playoffs. Yeah. Which, for the Cleveland people, that's great. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like us. I mean, we got the Dodgers, yay, but it's, you know, we got the Lakers oh, and the Clippers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your thing today that, about DeAndre Jordan that you tweeted? He's like 26 for 30 from the oh, free throw line or something. It's a season. trip. <laughs> He's like shooting 87% from the free throw line. Yeah. Wow. Which, I mean, it's like it's not going to stand. No. But just who the hell could even say that at any point? As soon as he starts the season, he's zero for, for one. Right, yeah. Zero percent. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? He's never been 87% in his life, I'm wow. pretty sure. Uh, that's pretty good. Unbelievable. Way to go, DeAndre. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, let's move on to uh, some classy dames. This one's a classy dame with a great palate. It's Beer Babe of the Week. It is indeed. Her name is Lisa, and you can find her on the Instagrams at Pork and Pints Boston. I figured it'd be nice to showcase a Boston person. I'm a good loser. I'm you a are. good sport. <laughs> Very classy of you. Yeah, Pork Pork and Pints Boston is where you can find her on Instagram. This picture, she's drinking a, a brewery Omegang. Which is the one that does oh, like yeah. the Game of Thrones beers or whatever. So, That's right, uh, they do. Yeah, make sure you give her a follow. Uh, I think Dan will test the fact that you won't be sorry if you do. That's true, yeah. Yes. Be, you know, be a sport. Yeah, be a sport. Boston one. Yeah. Baston. Baston. <laughs> uh, as I alluded to, we have our drunk stories that were recorded at Integrin's Oktoberfest. We're going to start rolling those out. Here is the first of our drunk <laughs> stories. One weekend with my wife celebrating my birthday in Las Vegas, and we went out to the Strip and enjoyed the libations quite a bit. 
And then when we got back to the hotel, we couldn't find our room. And it turned out after searching around the hotel for about 45 minutes that we were actually in the wrong hotel. <laughs> we eventually stumbled out and went down the block and found our real hotel and made it into our room eventually. About two hotels down. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Guy might have had a few beverages at the Oktoberfest as well. I like how he found the real hotel, not yeah, the fake hotel. Right, yeah, those damn fake hotels. Who <laughs> gave him the fake hotel? His fake mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna slap your real hotel in the face. <laughs> oh God, yes. And by the way, just because we're not at Oktoberfest anymore, doesn't mean you can't send in your drunk stories. You can record them and email them to yeah. us, young filter gentleman at gmail dot com, or just leave a voicemail. 805-538-BEER. It's easy as that. Three, three, seven. So easy. Don't need details. I mean, that was a great story. Quick and to the point. That's right. He got hammered, lost his hotel room. It was two hotels away. Found the real one. <laughs> and then the best at the end was, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone can do it. Yeah, a little Chewbacca <laughs> cheers at the end there. Uh, all right, let's get some music for this. Yeah. From a bottle, from a can, why don't people understand my inebriation? Beer science. So this is uh, from Toby, as I mentioned earlier, who does Toby Fest every year. He sent in his Toby Fest 2018 recap. He also sent in some pictures, which I will, uh, with his permission, post on our social media so Yay. you can see. Just coolers stuffed with beer, lots of people drinking. Here's what Toby had to say. Hello, gentlemen. This past weekend, we held our annual craft beer festival, Toby Fest, for LSU Homecoming Weekend. To recap, this is a party I hold every year where I ask our tailgating crew and other friends to bring a six-pack of craft beer for a semi-organized tasting. Uh, Four beers for tasting, the other two for general consumption throughout the day. This year we had 29 craft beers to sample, plus three home brews. We had wide spectrum of styles, blonde ales, wheat beers, stouts, porters, IPAs, and sours. We passed around each bottle for for people to pour a two-ounce sample into a cup, and once everyone has a beer, we do a toast. Then on the next beer... Uh, excuse me, then on to the next beer. We had a solid 50 people start tasting, but as random people walking down the street saw what we were doing, they joined in. So we probably had 80 to, not 80 to 90 people finishing the wow. tasting with us. Everyone left heavily hydrated. Could you imagine just walking down the street, just a bunch of people drinking beer at a table? <laughs> I'd jump in too. Hey, what's going on over here? Yeah. I better <laughs> uh, inspect this for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, my favorite submissions were the Free Tail Ghost Pixel American Hostel Slumber Party. Uh, Hoppy Stout. That was a long name. <laughs> Parishes Spindle Tap DDH Operation Juice Drop IPA, Crooked Stave IPA, and Urban South Quatrefoil Sour IPA. I don't know what that word is. Mm. Uh, I've attached a few picks, including the beer list and an after pick with a can uh, bottle of each beer tasted. Cheers, fellas. Toby in Texas. Toby, thanks again for sending the update. Indeed. I'm so we gotta go to like a Toby Fest. Yeah, sounds like it. Here's here's one of the coolers. I'm holding a, a shot up to the gentleman. Whoa. It's just uh chock full of beer. Oh damn. Yeah, that's that's just one of them. So uh my kind of party. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun. Reminds me of when I went uh, tailgating at the Rams game last year. Like I just showed up and found myself at a random like tailgating spot and like, yeah, come on in, have some food and some beer. <laughs> I was like Really? Like, I don't know you people. Like, yeah, yeah, come on in. And, like, you're a Rams fan, right? I was like, sure am. <laughs> Today, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Rams. <laughs> just ram it. Uh, <laughs> and we just we proceeded to drink as much as we could before we went into the game to save a little money on during game hydration. So right. Had like six beers at the tailgate party. Just bought one when I was in there to sip on for there a while. You go. Nice. Free food. It was it was the best. Awesome. Tailgating's fun. You get uh, arrested and thrown in jail. You do that at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, they're they're pretty stingy about that. Bullshit. So. Uh, if you guys have any beer stories you want to tell us, the unfiltered gentleman at gmail We will gladly tell your stories and uh, be jealous of you. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have a couple of corrections. Hmm? I was notified. Uh, by Brian, who's on the show a few weeks back. Oh, yeah. That when we had uh, Campanology's Pale Ale for Boozing on the Budget, I kept saying cacophony or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea how to say it. Uh, I was I was uh, so politely corrected to be told it's pronounced cacophony. Oh, cacophony. That makes sense. Yeah, so uh, I'm an idiot. What do you expect? <laughs> I, can't, I can't read for shit. Um, so there's that. And then a couple weeks ago, we were talking about Wayne's World in the car, and I said it was a Pinto, and it's not. It's an AMC. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Yeah. Man. I told you people would tweet in and correct me. <laughs> it always happens. At least you got that cleared up. Yes. Yeah. Now we're on the up and up. We're so all... it's a cacophony. If that's... Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. Just wondering. Yeah, no idea. It sounds Not familiar. Dairy. I don't know. Does it? it? Sounds like an extinct animal or something. <laughs> I thought we were going to learn a word today. <laughs> cacophony. I guess I could have looked it up. Yeah, instead of what? But I figured when I looked up the beer a couple weeks ago, it would have popped up with something. So Mystery bag. Yeah. <laughs> Bag of mystery. Bag of mystery, yeah. <laughs> Who wants a sausage? Maybe a name for a vibrator. Hey, oh. Cacophony or bag of mystery? Cacophony. Oh, okay. <laughs> and like, an Italian vibrator. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and a vibrator you can use as a phone. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding that dick up to his face. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, all right, I think it's time we call it the pen. I'm getting pretty thirsty. And now- Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> wow. It's a rough show tonight. <laughs> See? Holy. All right, let's uh let's call the pen for our bullpen beer. Please. Dave Roberts holding me back there. <laughs> <laughs> He's making the calls. To the bullpen for <laughs> beer. Boy, All if right. Dave Roberts was making the calls, we would have been hammered by now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh man. So we are drinking a Mocktoberfest. Uh, a Mocktoberfest is a Martzen that, instead of being brewed with a uh, mm. lager yeast, is brewed with an ale yeast. This, of course, is mine. That's why it doesn't taste very good. Uh, actually, the taste is there. At least I think it is. It's yeah. got the right taste that a, a Martzen slash Oktoberfest should have. It's got mm. that caramel and malty and just kind of Octobery goodness. What's wrong with it is that it's been sitting in the bottle for like four weeks now, and it's still pretty flat, as oh. you will taste as you drink. Uh, I don't know what happened. The way I, I uh, carbonate beers is I add sugar to them before I bottle it, and then the yeast eat the sugar, and it carbonates, and with the cap on, you know, the carbonation stays in, and then we have carbonated beer. That didn't happen this time. Hmm. <laughs> it, it, like, I tried it after a week. You're supposed to wait at least two weeks. I tried after a week, and I was like, oh, it's pretty flat. I tried after two weeks, I was like, still pretty flat, but slightly better, and that's kind of where it stopped. Wow. Hmm. So uh, what you taste now is what I, I assume we'll be tasting for the rest of this uh, bottle run. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the taste is there though. Mm-hmm. Like you said, yeah. like I was kind of like, what the heck? Yeah. You know, there's no carbonation, but a little flat. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the taste is there. I was like, okay, I, could, I, 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 and I guessed it was a Marzen. I wish I would have said something, but I was like, yeah, this does taste like a Marzen. There you go. I'm glad I got that part right. Yeah, yeah. It's so. uh right around five percent. It's like five point one percent. Eighteen okay. IBUs. Uh, untapped would probably give this like a point one because it's garbage. Uh, it's, it's really <laughs> saddening because I was like, oh, I got the flavor profile pretty dead nuts on. You got it, yeah. Yeah, I just... That is weird, couldn't dude. Couldn't get it to carbonate. Well... I, it might be that I uh, fermented it a little warm. This is... Somebody out there that knows more than I do, please tell me. I fermented a little warmer than I wanted to because I don't have uh, temperature control. Mm. And so it seemed to be fine and it, I finally ended up hitting the numbers. It took a little no- longer than I wanted to. But I did use a little like yeast energizer towards the end. And so my guess is towards the end after I did that, like the yeast got one little last kick in and then, oh. and then you know, take a shit. So by the time I bottled it and put sugar in, like they just didn't have anything left in them. That's my best guess. I really don't know. So somebody a uh, temperature gauge would really help. Like it's kinda like when you're cooking, you know, you're barbecuing or something like that. Like right. I used to be like, ah, eh, temperature gauge, but then it's like, well, how do you know how hot it is? Like, <laughs> you look at it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have a thing. I can see the temperature if I okay. want to. The thing is, it's pointless because I don't have a fermentation chamber that's temperature controlled. So, like, I can't put it into a fridge. Like, a lot of home brewers have chest freezers, and then they have these things that they plug into them, and it controls the temperature. You're like, oh, I want to ferment this at a, you know, it's an ale, so like 65 degrees or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they'll set it, and it stays at 65, and it's a, it's a you know, perfect ferment temp. I don't have that. I just, it mm-hmm. ferments out in the open, so it depends on how hot it is. Like, the last one I did was that pale ale, and uh, the pale ale fermented way too warm, and you can fucking taste it. Like, it's, no. it's a little rough. <laughs> uh, it tastes like a beer that fermented way too hot. Ah. So uh, I've decided I can only brew... In like the winter time now, <laughs> until I get like a chest freezer or something, uh, which I don't really have space for. So uh, a lot of winter brews coming up. Right on. And then <laughs> take a hiatus during the summer. Tis the season. Yeah. So I think what I want to do next is do a really big like imperial stout or something. Oh yeah. Just something big and boozy as fuck. And then what I want to do is take the same grains that I make that beer with and make a smaller beer with it. So like take the same exact grains and then make a brown or oh, something like that. Okay. Because you know they all. 
already have gotten like the main flavor and sugars off of them, but there'll still be stuff left. So you can get a brown out of what you would have gotten a big beer out of. Interesting. And a brown would be pretty good. That's a that's a flavor I haven't really gone back, or a style, I guess I should say, not really a flavor. We're not eating ice cream here, but like, <laughs> I haven't really gone back to, like I feel like I've gotten like lager, IPA, stouts, like everywhere else around the world, but I haven't come back to uh, browns for whatever I love reason. browns. It's really? Like, to me, it's one of the most drinkable like anytime beers. Hmm. You can have it with like almost any food and or no food. I love browns. That's why I like going to Flatfish so much because I mm. love the browns he's putting out and just always love browns oh, man because i'm on that marzen kick right now with mm-hmm. oktoberfest and all that like oh man i'm just running through all of them in reds too obviously but like yeah yeah i haven't gone back to brown it's been a minute i'm gonna have to go back i think my favorite oktoberfest beer this year is Enneagram's oktoberfest yeah that was oh yeah and good god damn it they're so good i gotta <laughs> just say that <laughs> Those you, assholes. Can just, you can just <laughs> taste the craft and the quality in it like yeah. it's just such a great beer and sometimes they do concoction match it mashes where instead of like essentially like boiling all the water with the grain or not boiling but heating or whatever they boil some water on the side and then dump it into the main water it's how they did it in germany like back in the days yeah. before they had boiling their um uh like kettles and stuff nah. so it they, just goes back to that show we did with them like you could just hear like how much they really care about their beer and everything it, it just really blew me away like, i was like man these guys are awesome yeah they're awesome and they're nerdy and they know what the really fuck doing. yeah they're they awesome very passionate about their beer yeah and it's delicious. It is. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get in the spirit, the Halloween spirit, with the uh, top ten Halloween beers or Ooh. scary beers. All right, that could just go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how long do I let this go for? <laughs> Settle down, Igor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> All right. So uh, 10 scary beers to drink on Fright Night. Oh, right. yeah. Uh, starting off, Halloween Ale. God, it's getting louder. Halloween <laughs> Ale from Gritty McDuff's Brewing Company. I've never even heard of the Gritty McDuff. No. Uh, it's an ESB 6%. Uh, next, Evil Dead Red from that's Nail my, Smith. Oh, there you go. That's my jam. <laughs> that's right. I think we might have heard of this one. Mm-hmm. Just go back an episode. Yep. Uh, number three, The Beast from Avery Brewing Company. Ooh. It's a grand crew. It, depending on the year, it's between 15 and 17%. That'll make your Halloween a little better. Indeed. All right. Uh, number four, Black Wyke. Or Wick. Yeah, Wyke, I guess. Wick. W-Y-C-H from Wickwood Brewing Company. It's a porter at 5%. Uh, question mark on the IBUs. Number five, Dark Penance from Founders Brewing Company. It's an Imperial Black IPA, 8.9%, 100 IBUs. Uh, Dead Ringer from Ballast Point. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this list does not count anymore. Oh, man. Uh, it's a Martin, 6%. I was right. like, yeah, you got to put Evil Dead Red ahead of that one. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah, of Holy course. crap. Uh, Deathly Pale Ale from Reaper Ale. It's American Pale at 6.2%. Okay. Uh, number eight, Dark Hollow from Blue Mountain Brewing Company. Imperial Stout, 10%. I'm liking these double digits. It's, we're getting to that time of year where like we can have double digits and <laughs> just say it's because we're enthusiasts and not alcoholics. <laughs> uh, number nine, Dark Star from Fremont Brewing Company. It's an oatmeal stout coming in at 11%. And number 10, 10 Hell Hath No Fury. Ooh. Ale from Bell's Brewing Company. It's a Belgian strong dark, and it's 7.7%. That's awesome. Yes. It's uh, it's big beer time. I think next week we should have a big beer on the show. Mm. There you go. We'll do it up big. <laughs> I really like this time of year with the Halloween. Like, you gave us some nice Halloween beers to, like, drink while we're watching a scary movie or something. Mm-hmm. Got to get all that violence out before the holidays. You know what I mean? <laughs> Got things. Everything gets a little too soft and too cozy and fuzzy and shit around, like, Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and Christmas. Let, let's watch someone get hacked to death on your television <laughs> yeah. before before all that shit happens. Drink a good red beer while we're doing exactly. it. Exactly. More reds. Love it. Hashtag more reds. All right, let's do a little news before we get out of here. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. It is indeed. This is some sad news. Toolbox Brewing down in Vista, California closes. I've heard so much good stuff about Toolbox Brewing, and I haven't had a chance to stop by. I want to stop by one of my uh, San Diego trips and... Never got around to it, and now they're closing due to uh, personal circumstances. Sounds like they're just not doing well. Hmm. So that's very sad news. You never want to hear of that. 
Uh, a judge signs a judgment allowing the sale of Saab Miller to uh, AB InBev. So basically, Budweiser has just bought the world's second largest brewery. So they're mm-hmm. out of uh, Europe. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, they, wow. they own the world. Jesus. Um, speaking of Budweiser, Golden Road, uh, remember we talked, man, this is coming up probably like a year ago, talked about their uh, tap room and beer garden they wanted to open up in Oakland. Oh, and yeah. the, the community was giving them a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. Well, they've officially canned the uh, project. Oh, wow. They will no longer be opening in Oakland. Um, Oakland residents got even more pissy and against it after the Sacramento one opened. And they, we talked about how they received like all the noise complaints. Oh, yeah. And they were not... Uh, they were in violation of their their license because they weren't actually producing. They have to produce so much per year and blah blah blah. So uh, they finally said, "No way, we're done." Because the the residents got on their high horses and so good on you, Oakland. Yeah, way to go. It's the best uh, thing you've done in quite some time, Oaktown. <laughs> yeah, uh, Widmer Brothers and Lyft, the ride sharing company, are cal- uh, calibrating. Good lord, collaborating on a new beer. It's the closing time IPA. Yeah, they would. Yeah. So I'm guessing uh, it means it's okay to, to drink while you're lifting? I thought it was already. Oh, okay. Well, now it's official. Oops. Yeah. Right. Now you've got an official now lift I, beer. Oh, now drink. I have the endorsement from Lyft. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you meant while the lifting drivers are, are lifting. Oh, yeah. Drivers. Scott's not lifting weights. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <well. laughs> yeah. Maybe beer cans. I was thinking like <laughs> using Lyft, the app, like, of course you should be drunk. No, no, the driver yeah, I'm saying yeah. can now, yeah, it's, it's official. They, <laughs> they endorse it. Now. Right. That's it's, funny. It's official, so. Mm. Uh, and finally, I thought this was really cool. Second Chance Beer Company and Alesmith have announced a collaboration release. I like both those breweries. We have them both on the show. Obviously, we had Alesmith last week. Yeah. Uh, Second Chance and Alesmith announced a uh, unique collaboration. It's believed to be the first of its kind. The collaboration features two beers, one recipe from each brewery, designed to be mixed and savored together. Hmm. It's called the Blendomatic. It'll be sold in four packs and feature a brew IPA from Alesmith and a hazy IPA from Second Chance. Both beers were brewed at Second Chance Beer Company with the Alesmith team. Uh, beer enthusiasts are encouraged to combine the two IPAs and enjoy a deliciously unique creation. The Can Art, hashtag Cans for Cans, designed by local craft beer founder Rudy Polerna Jr. is reflective of the collaboration. The individual can designs complement one another and together make one image uh, and a co-branded statement if you put them next to each other. Uh, Craft beer drinkers are becoming increasingly sophisticated and want innovation, but it's still beer. After all, they and we want it to be fun. We believe our concept of blended with a friend satisfies on all fronts, explained Second Chance Beer Company CEO Virginia Morrison. Marty and I have been friends for many years, and it's been wonderful to watch the success of Second Chance. Said Peter Zian, or Zion, uh, owner of Ale Smith. The idea of two distinct beers, one from each collaborating brewery, specifically designed to be blended together, is a novel concept, and I knew Marty and I would have a blast bringing it to life. Prepare yourself to experience something unique, fun, and most importantly, delicious. So this is kind of cool. So it's two beers you can drink on their own, or you're supposed to be able to pour them together, and they'll taste great. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. It's like a beer cocktail. It's interesting. Yeah. A little bit about the beers. Uh, the Alesmith Brute IPA exhibits no- notes of mango, white wine, lychee, and tropical fruit from a heavy dose of Nelson Savon, uh, featuring a delicate malt backbone, bone dry finish, smooth and subtle bitterness. It is refreshing, intensely flavorful, and smooth. Second Chance Hazy IPA has a soft, fluffy mouthfeel with bountiful fruit flavors of passion fruit and pineapple. <laughs> from Vic Secret, Papaya, and Apricot, courtesy of Idaho 7, and Blueberry Tangerine, brought to the taste buds by Mosaic Hops. When you combine them together, the dry finish of the brew and the softer, sweeter finish of the hazy creates a unique beer unlike anything that could be brewed on its own. Fresh tropical hop aromas dominate the blend with a lighter, drier body than the hazy would have on its own. This is kind of cool. Kind of a new concept. Uh, I think that's where it's going to go from now on. We've gotten to that point where it's like, yeah, all right, Hazy's now officially styled. It's recognized at GABF. How many more styles can we introduce? I don't know, but we can get into some like mixology type stuff. Yeah. We'll see. There's, there's a, at Alesmith, there's a whole bar dedicated to beer cocktails. It's only different mixtures of beer. It's in their barrel age room. It's actually pretty cool. You can get like one barrel age mixed with another barrel age. Oh, wow. I guess, I don't know if that's technically a cocktail, just mixed beers. It's, and it's really tasty. So hmm. we'll see where this goes. 
I think that's everything. The okay. blend matic The blend o matic If anybody has had it, let us know. I'm going to be looking for that. Sounds too. like an old Dan Aykroyd skit on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> 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 That'd be some good beer science to try those. Yeah. Like yes. That. So uh, let us know if you find them. We need to go pick them up. And uh, don't forget to come check us out this weekend. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> at 818 Brewing, November 3rd. Show goes on at 2. Come see us. Come say hi. Come drink a beer with us. We'll have... Uh, the owners and brewers of 818 Brewing on the show with us. And that'll be eventually released as a podcast. But come out for the fun because uh, we'll be getting hydrated. Oh, so. Yes. In the meantime, theunfilteredgentleman.com is where you can find us. We're on every podcast app, Apple Podcast, iHeart, whatever you're using. Uh, get us on the social medias at The Unfiltered Gentleman, except for Twitter, at Unfiltered Gents. Call us. Leave us a message, 805-538-BEER-2337. I think that's everything. Watch Wolf Cop. Watch. Oh, it's that time. <laughs> yeah, it's his season. Oh, it is the season. <laughs> I should have pulled some Wolf Cop jobs. <laughs> oh. This is a lot of burping and drinking, really. But oh, That's why we have Scott here. <laughs> <laughs> no need. To. We got him live. Yeah. Like a live reenactment. <laughs> uh, yes, go watch some Wolf Cop. We still need to do like an unfiltered oh, screen. Yeah, we, we should like, rent out a movie theater and <laughs> like have beers That'd be or something. would awesome. yeah. be pretty dope. I wonder yeah. what we could do as far as like having beer on hand and the laws behind that yeah we should look into that that could be pretty sweet yeah if anybody knows how to do that let us know because <laughs> i sure as hell don't that'd be awesome yeah if anybody's like a smart organizer of things please contact us the unfiltered room at gmail.com uh, in the meantime i hope everybody is staying hydrated i know we are and on that note good night everybody yeah.